Hello and welcome to a new Crusader Kings 2 series in Witcher Kings. This time we're going to be playing as Skellige. Now, Skellige are a little bit of a blank spot in my knowledge of the Witcher kind of universe, but my impression from them, from mostly coming from Witcher 3 here, is it's kind of a land uh, seeped in tradition. There's a lot of uh, superstitions, there's a lot of kind of reverence of druids and things going on there. But it's also kind of deep family ties. It's it's got a kind of a um, it's got a kind of a Celtic Viking feeling around it, kind of like a mixture of that kind of culture, and it's pretty cool in this uh, particular mod because it's I believe the only place which is pro has proper raiders, and it's the only place where we can actually go a little bit cool on the naval combat. Well, not really naval combat, but we can we can kind of cause problems with a lot of borders along here. And our goal for the series is pretty much going to be, well, I think we're going to try and grow Skellige. Because we could try and stay the same size and just kind of, you know, raid people. That's not going to get us nowhere. Like, that's we, we can do that easily. I think what we want to try and do is we want to try and grow. We've, we're going to play a Skellige that's decided it no longer wants to be part of the islands. It's going to break a little bit of tradition. It's going to try and expand into... Uh, into Nilfgaard, into the Northern Realms, try and make itself a global power to be reckoned with. So, who are we playing? We are playing the uh, Konung Crack, the Seaboard of Skellige, Kraken Crate, who is um, somebody who you meet in Witcher 3, I think, and as he is also involved um, a little bit in the books. Um, I haven't read all the books, but he is definitely involved in the... I think it's the marriage stuff that goes on with... If I go back a few generations here... Um, oh, yeah, I can't go there because she's the fake Siri. Um, but, uh, yes, she, he's involved with Siri's mothers. I think um, marriage kind of stuff going on. He was a contender for uh, her hand in marriage, as it puts it on the wiki. But it, it, it's not really... Uh, you know, it didn't pan out that way. However, uh, we're basically going to go... Try and take over whatever we can. Raid. That's our general plan. So let's have a look at our stats. We have High Marshal. We're really good at Marshal. We have three heirs, at the very least. Um, I think it's just Agnatic. Yeah, it's just Agnatic. I assume that there's not going to be any events that take the um, the bits of Witcher 3 where it had uh, some things with the succession for who was going to be the next High King Skellige. I assume none of that's in this mod. I assume it's just going to ensue, it's just going to assume that Kraken Crate is, you know, the leader of Skellige, which is fine for our purposes. Um, we also have three daughters, uh, who we should try and marry off at some point if they aren't already married. Um, some of them are married, some of them aren't. So we should probably try and get a few alliances. Not sure with who. I'm not sure what our religion group kind of allows us to do, but we'll have a look in there. Um, we also have some concubines, because we are allowed to have concubines by our religion, so we're allowed to have three concubines. We also, our fleets can navigate major rivers, very important, because this kind of river here is major, so we can maybe do some raiding of Temeria, raiding of Nilfgaard, we can go right in there. That, that would give us some good places to raid. Definitely worth having a look around there. Um, vassals do not mind if their levies are raised. Fantastic for raiding, because it means that we can just, you know, bring up all of our troops and just go for it. And can raid infidel neighbors for loot. Very important. And the other part is, we're just feudal. There's nothing weird going on, just feudal. Perfect. We are a reasonably good fighter, so if we get into any kind of stuff with that, that's good. I have no idea if Skellige has any kind of special mechanics or anything. Um, I would assume maybe it doesn't, because it's this mod is really focused around the Witcher 2 kind of start. Like the Witcher 2 kind of... Um, where everything's happening there, where its action is. And Skellige wasn't really involved a lot in that. But, um, we should be able to go and raid people. Right, uh, let's go set up our council, and then we can start seeing who we want to go after first. So, Court Magician, we have nobody. We have no sorceresses in court, so we're just going to leave that there. Uh, everybody else seems alright. Um, this pr uh, princess doesn't seem ideal to be our court priestess. She has, like, just very little learning. Doesn't seem like something we're going to want her to do. There are no societies, right? Yeah, there's no societies. I don't think there's any in the mod yet. Um, I think we're going to just get them to perform charity is probably our easiest one. Perf cultural tech is also fine. It, it really doesn't matter. It's, I'm assuming everything's our religion over here when we start. Uh, yeah, everything is very much our religion over here. So maybe 
We don't even have the ability to convert people to our religion anyway, so that's fine. Uh, why don't we go perform charity in our capital? Uh, talking of our religion, do we have... Okay, so we just have a religion of moral authority. We cannot reform it, I assume? Well, I mean, reform's not there on the religion, so I assume we can't reform. Um, it doesn't really say. Oh, we do get a modifier to units and holdings. So we get extra levy size and extra retinue size. That's pretty cool. Um, okay. Anything else that we can do? We can invite a sorcerer to court. Might be worth it. It's a little bit... It's a lot of gold, but it might be worth it to get some extra magic. I'm not sure... Like, magic's not... Magic is very useful for an older character, which we are going to be very soon. We'll maybe see how much money we make per month before we commit to that. Council-wise, um, might want to replace our Marshal. He's a little bit bad. We could replace him with Loki, um, our son. That would definitely seem like an alright option. He is a powerful vassal, however, so he's not going to like that. Is he good at anything else? Nope. Not good at anything else at all. Yeah, our council's pretty much made up of powerful vassals right now. We don't really want to annoy anyone. We don't want to, you know, shake up the boat too much. Um, right, let's just collect taxes in the capital. Train troops. Probably seems like the best one. Organizing the army is really good for getting ourselves commanders. I think we need to train troops if we're going to be constantly raiding, because we want the levy reinforcement so we can keep that going. Seems like a good idea. Diplomatic relations. Do we have any vassals who dislike us? No. Well, we have one. Okay. Because he wants a seat on the council. We don't have enough unless you're good at something. Yeah, you're not really good enough. Okay. Well, we're going to improve relations with that vassal then. Where are you? You're over on that island. Seems easy enough. Our, our uh, chancellor is pretty good, so he can go improve relations over there. All right. Uh, next stuff up, our laws. We have gavel kind. Ideally, we want to stop getting gavel kind. People dislike it when I go straight to Tanistry. Tanistry is the best option. I will say this again and again and again. Tanistry is so good. People dislike that. Primogenitor seems like it could be a good option. Um, that, that seems like a good compromise. However, it does mean that we need to have medium crown obligations, high crown obligations, or maximum crown obligations. Where is it? Oh, oh, or if we have Conclave, which is what we have. Late feudal or imperial. Okay. Uh, so we could possibly go for that. Uh, elective Gavokine just sounds absolutely awful. It's worse than Gavokine. Almost. I mean, it's fine. It still goes... But it, I mean, I guess it allows you to choose your heir. It's just a little bit less consistent. I think, maybe. It, they're probably about equal. It doesn't really matter. Uh, although it does say junior heirs always get the choice to declare independence without a war. So I don't really like that. Uh, seniority could be really good. Could be really, really good. Um... Something that we can get right now as well. Seniority seems like a good choice. Um, yeah, yeah, we, we have everything that we need. Apart from the vassal having no negative opinion, us having reigned 10 years. How long have we reigned? Four years. So in six years, we're looking at this choice. Ultima Genitor, also all right. Although we would have to change to late feudal or imperial administration. I, I assume late feudal is the only one that we have available to us. Yeah. But we don't even have that because we don't have legalism level 3. We're not that far off, actually, but we don't have it right now. Um, we don't want to change a crown law, then, if we want to do this. Could, well, I mean, we could change a crown law, but because it's just normal law. I assume it, I think it's a 10-year law timeout, so we're fine on that. Obligations, all neutral. This one, everything. Ruler has full power. Okay, well, that's pretty good. I like having full power right now. We'll see how people feel about it. Military, we have about, yeah, 4,000 troops. That's reasonable. That's reasonable. If we look at Sintra, like a one, they, they have less troops than us. So we are stronger than Sintra. How many boats do we have? Can we um, effectively use it? Um, we cannot affect, we have like, so if we have 29 boats, 100 on a boat, we can't effectively use our army currently. That's pretty unfortunate. That means that what we'd have to do is we'd have to kind of get off our boats, stop somewhere, and like drop people off and then you know, pick them up again, or then, like, get the next slot. That's pretty bad. Ideally, if we're going to try and attack somewhere, we might want to try and get some coastline. Do we have anywhere we can attack? We have nowhere that we currently have a Cassus Belly on. All right, important to uh, have a look there. Uh, court Physician. Do we have a good Court Physician? Um, designated Regent? Well, I would assume that should just be our son, Hialmar. That seems like a reasonable choice. Hialmar. Where are you? There we go. We'll just make him our regent for just now. Court physician. We have a 20. That's pretty good. It means we don't have to spend money. Um, 
Right, ambition. What are ambitions? See the realm prosper. Tempting. Tempting. We could definitely do that as the first one here. I guess this is stewardship early, which would be nice. Problem is we're not going to be alive that long. I mean, we do have um, the cannon trait, which gives us extra health. We do have uh, tall, which gives us a little bit extra and strong, which gives us a little bit of extra health. So that would definitely keep us up. I think skilled fighter even gives us health. So yeah, we are going to be alive for a reasonable amount of time. Even skilled tactician gives us a little bit. But as you get older in the mod, it starts to try and kill you, which is unfortunate. Build a war chest could be good as well. We can definitely do that really quickly with raiding. But I think that might be what we go with. Can we do that quickly with raiding? And focus. We go further into kind of war stuff. Get ourselves more people around us. We go into stewardship, try and get ourselves some money. Definitely seems like an alright option. That would get us uh, a reasonable amount more money. Um, family would be good if we were looking for more children. But we really have more than enough. Seduction. Doesn't seem like us right now. Scholarship and theology don't really seem like where we're going. Um, I think either hunting or war seems really good. Uh, we don't have any rivals, do we? No. So we'll go hunting for just now. Hunting's reasonably alright. Okay. Um, court magician can't choose. We can create a, t uh, a title. We can create the Duchy of Ardskellig. Not really what we're going for. We have an unmarried heir. We should definitely marry him off. But we should also set crown focus in our capital to um, basically get all the good events. Right. Heir. Um, we're looking for marriages. What would be useful to see? Actually, let's look on the... Um, Oh yeah, I think we can still use this to have a look for marriages. So if I load filter zero, that should give us our marriages. So it's my religion group, and people who are women, not in prison, not married, not a ruler, in diplomatic range. Doesn't matter if they'll join our court or not. Um, great house doesn't really matter, although might matter for marrying off our son. Might be a good idea to have a look for a good great house. What's our son got in terms of traits? He's got strong, which is pretty good. Um, if we get too strong, that gives our, the child a good chance of getting strong. Um, let's have a look. Let's see if there's any uh, strong people out there. There are no strong. Okay. But it looks like we can marry into the north, which is nice. Um, that's very nice. That means that we can potentially get some marriages, uh, which would get us alliances, which is good. Uh, let's load a great house then. If we can't have strong, we'll load great house. And let's just see if anyone has any genetic traits. We could marry, we got our son married to Cyrilla, to Siri. That seems like a fantastic idea. That actually seems brilliant. It gets a strong claim on the kingdom of Sintra for her, which is something that we could actually press actively in a war. That seems fantastic, yes. Um, let's arrange ourselves this marriage. I mean, it's not necessarily the easiest war in the world, but I think this is a good one. And the claim will be inherited by a successor to Sintra. Which means in our family line, even if we can't get it for Siri, we can get it for our, for us. Seems like a fantastic choice. Our next son along is not married as well. Um, let's see who we've got. So we've got we've done the genius. Let's see who's next on our list. Next on our list would be like quick. Uh, that would be uh, our daughter. We should really do great house, not mine. Wait, they, they gave us a different option. They gave us new people. Why, why, why when I went to yes, does it only show us her, but when I go to not mine, it shows us more? Oh, because these people aren't in great houses. Well, that's not working as intended, then. That just doesn't work, that button. Okay, weird. Anyway, yes. Um, so, quick's not going to work for us. Uh, what was it? Tall? Is that, that the new one? Um, so it could also be called giant? Nope. Okay, neither of those. Um, what else are we thinking for genetic traits? We have quite a few of them. Um, I don't see anything else that would be brilliant. Skilled fighter, maybe? We'll have a look at that. Skilled fighter? I like how every time we type, Siri, like, it, it changed whether she join our court or not. Okay, we've got a fair number here. Let's search by age. How old is our son, Loki? He's 20. Okay, and let's see who we got. So we got Nanus, uh, who is a Sintrian. Okay, we could marry more into Sintra. Um, that's not the worst idea. We got a Redanian we could marry into. That seems like a reasonable choice, actually. Yeah, let's marry into Redania. Um, her grandparent is in charge of Sinfred, right in the middle there. Yeah, that's very reasonable. Would you like to marry my son, Loki? Yes, fantastic. Right, um, next one is our daughter, who is actually already married. He's married to, uh... 
Hyom Hare, uh, uh, and Halfdan. So he's the child of Halfdan, our brother, our brother-in-law. Okay, that's good. Uh, that means that we're going to have a very secure alliance with him for a long time. That's, that's really quite good. Um, do we have a non-aggression pact? We don't. Okay. Wait, non-aggression non pact still exists, right? I'm not being crazy. Uh, yeah, we we can form alliances and things. That's fine. Just want to be 100% sure. Right, next one is uh, Ragnar. Ragnar. Let's see who we can marry him off to. Let's, let's continue with the skilled fighter. Uh, Nanus. Nanus seems alright. She was, uh, she is a Cintrian. Okay, um, her father is in charge of that land in Sintra. Okay, not, not a lot of land, but a little bit. Snowfrid, um, that is the son of uh, Count Herwig up there in Verdun. Yeah, that seems, that seems like a better marriage in terms of uh, location. We'll, mar we'll get a marriage into her for Rag... Uh, yep, Ragnar can get a marriage in there. Right, next one is Ceres. Um, okay, well, we'll see who we, we can get a marriage for there. We're going to just get rid of this. Quickly, we're going to search for men and do the same thing. Um, so, we're looking for things like strong. Strong's definitely a good one. Uh, doesn't leave us a lot. We could marry her to uh, uh, Sigmund Dist uh, or Sigismund uh, Dijkstra. That's an interesting marriage uh, can <laughs> there. I'm, I'm just interested to see if he'd say yes, to be honest. Matrilineal? He would not say yes to a matrilineal marriage, but he would say yes to a marriage if we wanted that to happen. I mean, it, it's an alright marriage. It, it definitely makes things interesting. You know what, sure, we'll, we'll marry into House uh, Dijkstra. And then next one is Gurit. Um, let's see who we want to marry her to. So we've done strong. How about quick? We got the Prince of the Hengsforth League uh, up here. So his parent is a king. That seems like a real good marriage for our last daughter, um, Gurit. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Right. Now we've done that, we should start having a look about where we want to start, um, you know, raiding. Let's just start with a few close ones. Um, let's see what we got. See if we have anywhere. So all along here is worth just a ton of money. Look how much is. Um, so basically, if you don't know what raiding is, we have a look here. It says what our max loot is and what loot is protected by fort level. So max loot is the amount you can get from just sitting on a province. Uh, loot protected by fort level you get once you finish the siege. What we're looking for is provinces that have a high amount of loot, which is outside the fort level. The reason we're looking for that because it means we can grab it and we can run. So, um, I think we're just going to start raiding Sintra. I seem to think that seems like a really good idea. So, let's raise ourselves up some men. Let's go for our vassal levies first. Then we're going to raise up our fleet levies. Uh, and we're just going to go grab these. We're going to do shift V to get them all on boats. If they can get on boats, we get the remaining men. Luckily, they can all walk, which is nice. We'll get our boats and we'll get them all to go to the same place and we'll unpause the game there we go um commander of skellica we need that's fine we can put in a commander um we'll put in thornstein that's fine um our wife uh, rena has sent us a gift it is a small puppy but of the finest pedigree and destined to grow into a great hunting dog of course we're going to accept a hunting dog from our wife um, what are we going to call it? We'll call it Faithful. That seems like a good name. Perfect. Our first marriage has gone through. Um, interesting that uh, because she was in Sintra, uh, technically the Empress of Sintra, the fake Siri gets to choose, but uh, that's fine. So we now have a daughter-in-law being uh, Cirilla Raven. If we go back, we'll see that her parent is Pavetta, the one that we potentially could have married. But we didn't. In fact, as you can see, she married the Emperor. Anyway, that's fine. So we may have a little bit of a grudge against Nilfgaard. That's fine. Probably, probably uh, no harm, no foul, I would imagine. Right, next marriage is done. So this is our daughter-in-law. Has married to uh, Count Herwig of uh, Schwemland. So we will see if we can form an alliance. He does not want one. That's fine. 
Uh, Heng's fourth league has accepted the marriage. Do you want an alliance? No. But he does like us. That's reasonable. Okay. Uh, Dijkstra has accepted our marriage. So we can see if we can get an alliance with his son. That's again a no. But that's it's all fine. Continue just as we go here. Daughter-in-law. Um, granddaughter of this Duke of Sinfred. Do you want an alliance? Very much no. He, in fact... He despises us. He thinks that we are awful. Oh, you've made our vassal who doesn't like us very much like us some more. In fact, he actually likes us properly now. Very good job. Fantastic. Continue with the unpaused game. The winds of change are blowing. Our people have abandoned some of their our older traditions, and the practice of raising runestones is one that is no longer observed. Apparently, the latest fad has people writing with ink on parchment and vellum instead. What will they think of next? We'll no longer be able to commission runestones. I'm guessing that we were maybe the, um, I think it's called the Norse religion in base game. It might be Germanic. I can't remember which one they called it. It's one or the other. Um, but basically, it's actually probably all the pagan ones had runestones, I think. But basically, um, we're probably just the reformed version of that. Um, and that's probably how it's, it was set up. Anyway, court physician. Let's put in uh, our next court physician. That would be Hjalmar. Yeah, sure. Our son could be a court physician. Apparently it's a position where people die very quickly, but that's not ideal. A dangerous faction. They want to increase council power. Yeah, that's going to be difficult to get rid of. We could send a gift, which would get a little bit of extra opinion. And offer a non-aggression pact. That might... Does that take him out of the... I don't know whether non-aggression pacts take you out of factions. I would assume that they should, but we'll see if it does. He has accepted... It did. It took him out of the faction. Perfect. It works exactly as it should. That's nice. Alright, we'll get our boats. Double check our load capacity. It's 3,200. So yeah, we can't fit our entire army on there, but we can fit a, a fair amount. We'll fit our vassal troops. Sure, we'll lead some raids ourselves. We'll go with um, Loki and Ragnar. Yeah, we'll go with our two younger sons. That seems like a reasonable raiding party. Get off here. Oh. No, I forgot to do. All right, toggle looter. That means that we're actually allowed to loot. So, we'll head over to Sintra and have a look over here and see what we got. A druid stands before you, offering you his services and wisdom. Of course we're going to accept a druid. Why would we not accept a druid? All right, and we're just going to drop on Sintra. Uh, is there a... Oh, there is ruins in there as well. Which does actually have something that can be looted, I think. Um, yeah, it's got eight loot that we could potentially get there. Anyway, we're going to drop on Sintra, see what they do. But what they'll probably do, if we switch to loot mode, is they will probably instantly come and they'll raise an army and try and attack us. So we're going to have to be really careful. But it's fine. We have landed on their capital, which reduces their ability to raise an army. I'm thinking my daughter-in-law might fancy me. Um, sure, we'll make a move. We're, we're kind of a lustful fellow. We're, we have a lot of children, and you can probably uh, guess why. So we'll make a move. Uh, we've taken everything um, from fort level there. There's still a potential amount of 39 extra gold that we can grab here. If we siege, I don't think it's worth sieging, so we're just going to drop out. Um, how much money can we get? We can get 300, so that's going to be good. We gave her a good tumble. Fantastic. Right, uh, we can now drop in on the next province. Uh, they might raise the, the capital's troops and come after us here. Definitely a possibility. If they don't... See, this is what I thought they might do. They raised some troops. Aha! Assassins of King, Assassin of Kings. You receive news that King uh, Need Damar of the Hengsforth League has been murdered by an unknown assassin, plunging the realm into chaos. After King Demavend of Edurn, it, it is the second monarch of the north that has fallen to the hands of these so-called Kingslayers. Darkness is looming. Now, why that is very important... Did we not just marry in there? One of our daughters definitely just married into the Hengsforth League, right? You're it. So our son-in-law is now the heir to the Hengsforth League. That is crazy. That's really good for us. Okay, interesting. wonder how we can use that. We're not really a plotting type. Let's just have a... Yeah, it's it's not really going to work out, but... There's, there's some potential there. There's some good potential there in the future. Anyway, we'll continue the siege... Our dog has grown quickly and is no longer a little puppy. He runs fast and has a keen nose, and your dog handler's praise is good character. Good dog. Fantastic. 
You can get Bad Dog, and Bad Dog will basically uh, go and attack people. And that seems like a really bad thing for us. Look at that. We got a reasonable amount of money. We got 45 gold, and I think it is time to end the episode here. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, or if you want to see the series of the channel grow, please leave a comment, leave a subscription. All of that helps the search ranking, and that is what gets people in to watch videos and helps the channel grow, basically. So, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.